with Chris Phillips on Jazz FM. Jericho, Joshua bit the battle of Jericho when the walls came tumbling down. Joshua bit the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua bit the battle of Jericho when the walls came tumbling down. You may talk about the bonds of Gideon, you may brag about your man of Saul. But you never saw nothing like Joshua at the Battle of Jericho. When the sun stopped shining in the middle of the day, the sky began to storm. The ram horns, the sheep horns began to blow, and the walls came tumbling down. You've heard about Joshua He was the son of Nun He never stopped his work until Until the work was done Up to the walls of Jericho He marched with spear in hand Go blow them ram horns Joshua cried Cause the battle is in my hands Joshua fit the battle of Jericho Jericho, Jericho, Joshua fit the battle of Jericho when the walls came tumbling down. Well, the Bible says that Joshua's spear was eight of those cubits long And upon his hip was a double-edged sword and his mouth was a gospel horn Up to the walls of Jericho he marched with spear in hand Don't blow them ram horns, Joshua cried, cause the battle is in my hand Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho when the walls came tumbling down. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho when the walls came tumbling down. The Battle of Jericho as featured on the new album from actor and virtuoso musician Hugh Laurie, best known here in the UK as one half of Fry and Laurie, the Prince Consort in Blackadder, Bertie Worcester, and latterly worldwide as Loose Cannon Dr. Gregory House in the hit US series House, now filming its eighth season that has elevated him to the highest paid TV actor in the world. So Hugh, your new album Let Them Talk is a tribute album born of a serious love affair with blues and in particular the great city of New Orleans. Yes, it is a love affair and I'm coming clean. Um, I've loved it for a long time, although I hadn't been there until quite recently because you know how it is when you really love or admire a place or a person, you get nervous about actually meeting that place or a person in case it lets you down or you let it down. Um, ter uh, I'm terrified of meeting Clint, Clint Eastwood, for example. Uh, in case I say something stupid, or he does, you know, wouldn't that be awful? Yeah. So much, so, it was the same with New Orleans. I thought, well, 
what if it turns out that this is just like any other city and it's got shoe shops and banks in it um that would sort of spoil the whole magic of the place uh, I think we can be confident that that's never going to be the case with New Orleans. I, mean, I, I remember my first fascination with New Orleans came through watching um, Wild at Heart, a David Lynch film, and there's right. that crazy bar scene with that kooky woman singing in it, and I thought, I want to go there. Yes, because kooky and crazy are on every street corner, mm. and, and also halfway down the street as well. So tell me about your first experience of New Orleans. When you rolled into, into NOLA, did it live up to its ex expectations? It did. It even smelled right. Uh, we got, I got there about midnight. Um, I was driving a convertible. Balmy evening. Well, it's always balmy, isn't it? Uh, balmy, if not actually sweltering. Um, and uh, it smelt of a um, vegetation slightly on the turn. It had a, a slight smell of that sort of slightly rotting feeling oh it was just intoxicating yeah heady stuff say the whale swallowed jonah out in the deep blue sea sometimes i get that feeling the same old whale has swallowed me Sunrise in the east Goes down in the west Sometimes I get that feeling Every creature needs some rest why I have this blues I do believe one day He will finally turn me loose has swallowed me from my very special guest Hugh Laurie here this afternoon on Jazz FM. Were you in the States at the time when Hurricane Katrina happened and how did you feel about how it affected New Orleans? Uh, I was there at the time. I didn't uh, go to the city at the time, although I, I, I actually was at the time was acting uh, a very wonderful actress called Celia Ward who was um, um, uh, 
she started organizing a whole series of benefits that which I, I just couldn't I couldn't get out of my my day job as it were to go and take part in but uh, uh, I was very aware well who wasn't we all were the world watched in in a sort of um, in awe at the uh, the awfulness of their plight um, and uh, you know, it seems it's a city that's been that has been kicked around an awful lot. It's in, of course, partly because of where it is. It, it uh, um, you know, when they built it, the um, uh, the French went round around the place thinking, "Well, where none of these, none of the places we want to put the city are quite right." But it, this is this is the least bad one, uh, and it's always uh, it's always going to, I suppose, will be vulnerable to. Uh, you know the rage of nature and um, and all kinds of other things. It's been kicked around by a lot of uh, different people and events. Just remember me, darling, when I'm in six feet of cold, cold ground. Just remember me, darling, when I. Feet of cold, cold ground. Always think of me, darling. Say, yeah, there's another good man gone down. Don't cry, baby. I'm gone Don't cry baby Don't cry after I'm gone I've let the good man love you Nothing wrong Six gold feet of ground Just lay my body At six cold feet of ground Well I will be the loser When the deal goes me baby when I'm in six feet of cold cold ground remember me
me, baby When I'm in six feet of cold, cold ground Always think of me, baby Say, yeah, there's another good man gone down Chris Phillips here on Jazz FM, and that was Six Cold Feet. I'm talking with Hugh Laurie this afternoon and playing selections from his tribute CD, Let Them Talk. Pilgrimage, it's a word I've seen used a fair bit in the descriptive language around the album, as uh, as if the whole relationship with your music and geography here are almost a religious connotation. It is. I mean, I'm not religious myself, I mean, in, in the conventional sense, but if, if, I, if I had to name one, it would. Be, I do think of... There is something divine about music and about uh, the uh, the states the, of contemplation that it can allow people to enter, and the and the kind of communication that it it can bring between people. Um, uh, it it allows people to commune in in ways that they cannot in other by any other means. I think, and there is something definitely. Uh, Sort of mystical about music uh it, it is yeah it is religion i think pilgrimage in the context of it's you visiting this this mecca of music so yeah. to speak and trying to be authenticated when you step up on stage or record an album that is so steeped in that tradition um how did it take you so long to actually get around to making an album of the music that you love and then taking it on the road well, because I'd, I'd for so long I'd had the, um, uh, and some people would argue that I sh I should still have, and I, I um, this sort of apprehension about um, straying out of the area that I know and that I'm supposedly semi qualified to practice in, which is to say acting, and go into an area where I know nothing, uh, where I don't belong, where I have no credentials, no qualifications. Um, you know that that was something that for years I thought, well, I can't do that. I, I uh, but then you know you reach a point where you think, oh, for heaven's sake, I can't, I can't go on saying that forever. I don't want to look back in twenty years and say, uh, you know, I could have done that. Yeah. Um, much much better to leap in and do it, and then if if people hate it, they hate it. But at least I, you know, at least I've, I've done it. Have you felt the need to lay down the disclaimer? You refer to being an actor as a pampered ninny on on your website and. You know, it's almost like you're precursoring everything with that uh, disclaimer. I suppose I am. I mean, I, I, I was just keen to say, to show that I, I am at least aware of what... Pe because I would think, I would honestly, I would feel it myself. If I was looking at myself doing this, I would feel the same things, and I would feel, what right has he? But then I, if you start to think about it, you know, there isn't really much logic to it. I mean, no, it's true. I hadn't been to New Orleans, but then, but, but I also hadn't hadn't been to Jericho when Joshua fit the battle of it. <laughs> Neither had Mahalia Jackson, by the way, or yeah. Paul Robeson. Or so, are you going to say that no one who hasn't been to Jericho is allowed to sing a song about Jericho? That's sort of mad. Um, Stephen Foster, who wrote Swanee River, never went to Swanee River to the, to see the real Swanee River. Um, and here, irony of ironies, Louis Armstrong, who recorded, did the sort of definitive recording of uh, St. James Infirmary, had never been to see St. James's Palace, which apparently is the, some people believe, is the origin of that song. That St. James's, what is now St. James's Palace, was a hospital, and that song, some people believe, may have come from an old English folk song. So, uh, you know, there are many, many um, tributaries running into this river, and uh, you can't say that any anybody owns any particular jug of water that you pull out of that river. Way down upon the Swanee River Far, far away That's where my heart is turning ever that's where the old folks stay
That's Swanee River and more from my very special guest, Hugh Laurie, in conversation in just a few moments here. Bye.
This is Chris Phillips talking with actor Hugh Laurie here on a Jazz FM special this afternoon. Tomorrow we have an amazing live recording of Vibes Man Roy Ayres with his band as he paid a visit to a West London primary school. Not to be missed. That's Friday afternoon from three. Uh, the music we just heard was Hugh's version of St. James Infirmary from his CD Let Them Talk with horn arrangements by one of the greats of New Orleans, Alan Toussaint, who describes Hugh in glowing terms as a surprising dichotomy. Well, he is... Uh yeah, that I'm well. I'm very flattered. That I'm thinking now. I'm already thinking. Is that a T-shirt? I think it might be a T-shirt. <laughs> well, I'm I'm very very flattered by that. I'm very very flattered, as I was flattered by his his presence on the record when the, when the producer Joe Henry suggested who, he'd worked with Alan Toussaint uh, on a couple of projects when he suggested sending um, some tracks to Alan f for his um, for him to do some horn arrangements. I thought you're mad and why would he you know the, the, he's Alan Toussaint is 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 uh, um, you know he is an Olympian he's um, how dare we have the temerity to ask him to do this but actually he was so generous and so enthusiastic and uh, I think he liked the stuff he said he liked the stuff and uh, he was moved to write I think some absolutely wonderful horn parts in a way that only he can. His, his, his horn arrangements are very, very distinctive, and uh, he thinks about horn parts in a way that I don't think anybody else qu quite does, and it was an absolute thrill to uh, to go down and to, to the Piety Street studio and watch him record with his with his guys, you know, it's just an amazing thing, an amazing thing. And the, the big voice of Irma Thomas on there as well, just Huge, she's beautiful. just wonderful, Irma Thomas is absolutely wonderful. I saw her subsequently, we played at a festival in San Francisco, and um, and it was so lovely to see her again, she was, she was in fine form, and I was just getting into the van to go to the airport. We'd, we'd done our show, and we had to ca uh, catch a plane. And she was waving at me f uh, while she was on set. While she was singing, she was waving at me to come on and play the piano with, with her. And I thought, I can't really believe this is happening, that I'm actually having to turn down Irma Thomas uh, because we're, we're about to miss a plane. I, I, this is just not real. None of this is real. I'm going to wake up, and all of this has been a dream. John Henry had a little woman And the dress she wore Was red She walked down the track She never looked back I'm, I'm going, going where John Henry fell dead I'm going where John Henry fell dead John Henry had Another woman And her name was Polly Ann John Henry was taken sick And he had to go to bed Polly Ann drove steel like a man Polly Ann drove steel like a man Supper soon. I got 99 miles of track. I want to line back. I'm gonna line them by the light of the moon. I'm gonna line them by the light of the moon. In my hand John Henry Hammond In the mouth 
nothing Until his hammer caught on fire The last words I heard that the poor boy say Give me a cool drink of water before I die Give me a cool drink of water before I die Give me a cool drink of water before I die were you aware of the um, the funky side of New Orleans, like the Meters and the Wild Magnolias? Oh, uh, the Meters I absolutely loved. And st I mean, listen, I listen to the Meters all the time. Um, yes, I mean, funk is a... Uh, the, the, the rumour is that uh, Buddy Bolden, the sort of this mythical figure, uh, he's not mythical, he was real, but... But he's mythical in as much as no one's ever heard. And there are no existing recordings of his music. Uh, there's no one alive who heard him play. So, you know, he, he got that sort of mythic status, obviously. But the, some people believe that he actually coined the word funk even before the word jazz had, had uh, been coined. Um, he had a song that he did called The Funky Butt. That's right. You heard it right. In fact, there's a club. Uh, there's a club in New Orleans called the Funky Butt. Um, but that he he the, the the theory is that he actually coined this word, and that funk is um, is is much older and has a much more sort of venerable tradition than people think of. But it's uh, yeah, I lo always loved all that stuff, and, and still do. Listen in color. Come a time when you regret it someday when you grow lonely, your heart'll break like mine. You gon' want me only after you gone, after you gone. Blind. 
to let somebody come around and change your mind. After the years we've been together, true joy and tears, all kind of weather. Someday. With me, right back where you started. After you gone, after you gone away. Yeah. After you gone, after you gone away. After You've Gone, featuring New Orleans great Dr. John with Hugh Laurie on piano. Hugh, on the album you've done a rendition of Tipitina, made famous by Professor Long here. And now there's a very famous venue in the heart of New Orleans called Tipitina. So have you ever had the chance to get up there on stage and uh, take part in one of the legendary jam sessions or some such? I have not. I have been there. Um, I have not... Uh, uh, but I've been, I went there as part of my pilgrimage. I went there actually to sort of... Uh, um, to pat the head of the statue of Professor Longhair that stands in the entranceway, and uh, and I actually um, I was talking to the the people who run Tipitina. It was actually closed at the time I went. Um, isn't that typical? Isn't that typical? I went. <laughs> that sounds like a joke. I went. It was closed. Um, but uh, for, but even so, I felt just walking around it, and I was there. Or you know, just uh, it was to me. It was like walking around uh, a cathedral. I was sort of. Uh, seeing the um feeling the wonders of this uh, great spirit um seeping out of the stones blues musician john cleary from he's from england of course from kent and he he had a picture of tipitines on his wall for, for ages and just kind of dreamed of being there and now he actually lives and plays out of new orleans can you ever see yourself um maybe having an apartment down there or living there or oh i would love that i would absolutely love that i would love that and, and in fact actual fact john cleary is i feel as if i am uh uh, in a very humble way following in his footsteps because he did do the very thing that I that I suppose uh, you know years before ten years uh, before I would have dreamed of doing myself in fact I saw him John Cleary almost 20 years ago playing in a uh, in a pizza express not 500 yards from where you and I are now sitting um, in fact he played Tipitina in that set I remember um, and I bought a tape, yes, back in the days of tapes, I bought a cassette from him uh, and wore it out listening to his stuff. A wonderful musician. And uh, yes, he's done, he's done the thing that I've sort of dreamed of doing and he actually has become, he's sort of the heir apparent now because he's a monstrous piano player and a great, um, great songwriter. And uh, I love his stuff. <laughs>
Won't you leave that boy alone? Yeah, dear Martina Tra-la-la-la Dear Martina Tra-la-la Dear Martina Wanna, wanna, more dollar Dear Martina Tra-la-la Patina from the New Orleans Influence tribute album Let Them Talk by Hugh Laurie. This is Chris Phillips and Hugh is my very special guest this afternoon here on Jazz FM. Hugh, your stock is considerably higher in New Orleans these days. If you wanted to revisit the album and choose new musicians to put on it, who do you think you'd want to record with? Oh, wow. Um, it's funny, you know, because so many of the people... So many of the people I really, really worship in that field are themselves piano players. So that's, I suppose, in the nature of it. If you now guitarists love to play with other guitarists and can because they're they're, they're instruments that, that sort of go well together. Um, guitars go well in, in duet, but to have another piano player, uh, of course, is a bit. You're always sort of slightly clashing. You think, well, if you do this, what am I going to do? Um, Oh my God, there are just so many of them. Where would I begin? You're right, though, that actually, before thinking about doing another one, I almost do want to go back and do the first one again because you, of course, you learn such a lot, and you think, uh, wow, if I ha if I uh, if I could do that again, I would do that slightly differently and do that slightly differently. Well, so you, you do have a, a, a deluxe version of the album which has got four more cuts on it, of course. It, it, yes, we did do some more recently, yeah. and uh, we did. Uh, Particularly, we're doing. Uh, we did a version of Hallelujah, I Love Her So, which uh, Ray Charles did so brilliantly. It's put a spring in my step and a smile on my lips. And if that isn't reason enough, I don't know what it is. And I'm proud to say, by the way, that the, the proceeds of that are going to the, the children in need. But yes, yeah, so we now, uh, this is apparently the way albums go. There are other organic things. You, you know, once upon a time, people stamped out a piece of vinyl and that was it. Well, no longer. It, uh, you know, things get added to it. Let me tell you about a girl I know She's my baby and she lives next door In the morning when the sun comes up She brings me coffee and my favorite cup Yes, I know Yes, I know Hallelujah, I love her so When I'm in trouble and I got no friends I know she stay with me right to the end People ask me just how I know I smile at them and say she told me so Yes I know Yes I know Hallelujah I love her so When I call her on the telephone And I tell her that I'm all alone all I gotta do is count from one to four I hear her at my door In the evening when the sun goes down And there ain't nobody else around She kisses me as she holds me tight And says, Daddy, it'll be alright Yes, I know Yes, I know Hallelujah, I love her so Is 
kisses me and she holds me tight. She says, Daddy, you will be alright. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. Hallelujah, I love her so. 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 So you in the band on the road very soon oh, here love in the to UK? Do that. Love to do that. I mean, when when ha we finish house in uh, April, and I'm hoping that the um, uh, the band are up. I think they are. I think they're all up for it. I guess I think they're having a good time and they get on well with each other. And we we have we have a we have a fantastic time together. And uh, yes, I hope we will. Um, we might even get a bus. I think we'll have a bus. If you had to make a, a trade, would it be music or acting? Music. But, but, having said that, I know perfectly well that I wouldn't be in a position to do this music if I hadn't done the... I mean, I can't disown the acting. Uh, I'm very proud of the stuff we've done and the, the things I've been involved with. Um, but, uh, and maybe, maybe it's because I've come to music late that I, I have that sort of wide-eyed... Uh, thrill of discovery and that maybe if I'd done that if I'd done this for 30 years I'd be um, uh, you know the, the bloom would be off the rose a little bit I don't know um, but at the moment I come to it I, I'm, I'm sort of 10 years old you know I walk into a studio with these musicians I'm I'm, I'm 10 years old again um, so obviously I, I'm, I'm in that sort of flush of excitement um, so right now, that that would be my answer. Yes, but you know, it's not. I don't. I I, I love acting. I'm fascinated by acting and uh, the whole process of trying to make things uh, to solve problems, make things as good as they could be. But um, right now, no. I, I'm, music is the thing. It's good to feel that passion, Hugh Laurie. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thanks. Walking down the levee with my head hanging low Looking for my mama, but she ain't here no more Baby, you don't know, you don't know my mind When you see me laughing, I'm laughing just to keep on crying She won't cook my dinner, won't wash my clothes Won't do nothing but Walk the road, baby, you don't know You don't know my mind When you see me laughing, laughing Just to keep from crying My breakfast's on the table and my coffee's getting cold Mama's in the kitchen getting sweet on my toe Baby, you don't know You don't know my mind when you see me laughing, laughing just to keep from crying I think my baby's too good to die Sometimes I think she should be buried alive Baby, you don't know You don't know my mind When you see me laughing I'm laughing just to keep on crying I wish I had a nickel I wish I had a dime I wish I hadn't given myself a bad woman's time Baby, you don't know you don't know my mind When you see me laughing, laughing just to keep on crying